Hello, this is Dan Pro. I'm going to help a forum member out at uh, uh, BlenderArtist.org with his uh, dog right here. And you can see his file is on my screen right now. And I'm going to start uh, his project like I start uh, any project. And that is to start uh, checking my meshes and my armature objects. I'm going to do T and N to get my end panel and tool panel out. All right. With all my rigs selected here, I'm going to do Alt, G, R, and S. And that will make sure that I don't have any thing that's uh, uncleared here and also with the the rig selected I want to do um, control tab to go into object mode and <clears throat> in, in object mode I'm going to check to see if there's any unapplied locations rotations or scale and there's not um, it's zero for location rotation and scales of one one and one is uh, scales of one are considered unscaled in Blender so that is fine and actually to make sure that I don't actually um, bump this in object mode in some way and uh, mess anything up I can just lock those uh, values and now let's uh, check the mesh and I want to check for the same thing uh, also in object mode locations and rotations and I see that there's a negative uh, 90 value in our rotation and our scale, val scale values are 1 1 and 1 um, the biggest uh, offenders and things that will cause uh, weird problems that are very hard to track down uh, are usually rotation values and scale values so I'm going to take care of this negative 90 value right now um, by applying um, the lo that rotation but first I want to check to make sure there's not a mirror modifier on here and I see that there actually is um, so I'm going to want to apply this one at least temporarily so I'll just uh, <clears throat> before I apply that however I want to do alt P and temporarily clear uh, the parent and keep transformation so basically clear it from the rig so so with alt p clear parent or clear parent and keep transformation and then i can apply my mirror and now control a i can apply my rotation value and now everything is zeroed out and uh, even more than that um, our armature object and our mesh that is going to be attached to that armature object i'll occupy the same uh, spot in space which is uh, exactly at the zero position of the world in X, Y, and Z um, and everything is uh, unscaled so that's going to be perfect and I can do the same thing as I did with my armature object and just uh, lock everything because uh, even if I tab into whoops, if I tab into pose mode here um, you can see that uh, everything's still going to work uh, we never really have to manipulate our armature object or our meshes in in object mode um, when we start rigging after we've applied all that stuff all right so one more thing here uh, we might want to actually get back to uh, a mirror modded mesh because it's actually easier to uh, weight paint I think anyways so I'm going to select the center edge loop just using alt and then uh, clicking on a loop in, in between these two vertices here and that's going to select everything down the center and I'm just going to check to make sure that everything is selected there sometimes a uh, topology will prevent uh, the complete loop so I am going to hide that and then select one vertex on the right side of the dog which would be the left side of our screen and control L to select that whole island and I'm just going to delete those vertices do alt H to unhide that center loop and then I'm going to go to our modifier stack and add modifier um, mirror and we can bump this above our armature modifier all right and wow I see a little oddity here if I select all those mesh and there's a little bit of I see a little booty over here with uh, on this back foot so I'm going to select one of those vertices and then control L let me see if I can delete those out X delete vertices all right so there was a little bit of a mesh error there so we took care of that no problem and one other thing I like to do is uh, check for doubles so in the tool panel with uh, edit mode of my mesh and in the tool panel let me slide this down here slide down here and do remove doubles and you can see it removed nine vertices so there was uh, a few more uh, uh, errors in there and um, duplicated uh, vertices and getting those doubles is actually really easy to do if you have something selected like this just have something selected and accidentally um, do shift D and then you think you cancel it out uh, those uh, vertices are actually there let me get in the, they're still there so uh, you just want to make sure I'm going to undo that that I 
get back to my boots here again. All right. No, I actually went down back too far, so I'm gonna have to redo this. Um, it's very easy to do, so don't worry about that mistake. Uh, I've done it thousands of times. <laughs> I'm gonna delete these again, then re-add my mirror. All right. And I did go back too far. I gotta get that boot again. All right. So now I'm back to normal here. So mirror modifier above our armature modifier, and I like to have our edit mode toggles on the mirror, and also like to have clipping on. And I wonder if I went back too far where I need to redo, uh, remove doubles again. Yep. And I need to do that again. Um, also for our armature modifier, what I like to have on all the time are the edit mode cage. Um, toggles and also preserve volume and the reason I like to use preserve volume is this right here I just lift this leg up here and I'm going to select that mesh and you can see uh, without it on there there's a little squishing in that mesh and this is going to give us a little volume preservation for free so it never hurts to have this in especially when you have uh, any type of organic mesh so I think our uh, mesh prep and our object our armature object preparation is over so let's go with our armature selected when we are in pose mode here go to the armature tab which is this man icon and I want to turn on x-ray so I can see all the bones in that rig and I also want to be in octahedral mode that's the mode that display mode that I prefer and axis display so I can see how these bones are aligned and I there are some uh, custom control shapes set on these bones uh, for now, I actually want to uh, just kind of ignore those because I want to see the actual positions of those bones so I can just turn off shapes. And all right, one of the first things I noticed when I opened up this file was uh, for for me, anyways, these legs seem like they were just a little bit too far back. So I want to select this uh, uh, basically would be a collarbone. It's it named here, the Spella L, and then I want to. Uh, take this front IK target bone and just go to side view. I'm going to do G Y and I'm going to drag this foot forward here. Uh, so the whole leg is going forward and that just looks a little bit more natural to me. I think uh, that foot was, or the whole leg was uh, just back a little bit too far. Uh, so now with those two controls still selected, I'm going to copy and paste to the other side. And now I want to actually make this uh, permanent for the mesh and the armature. So I can do that by selecting the mesh. Let's go back to our our modifier tab here and I want to pop our armature modifier up by using these arrows you can um, change positions of your modifiers uh, with those arrows so with armature modifier at the top of the stack I can now apply it and now I need to apply uh, that change to um, to our rig so I'm just going to search for apply and I want to select apply pose as rest pose so I'm going to click that and now our rest position bones have been reset there too now I can just reattach our mesh to our rig with control P and armature deform and everything should work like normal again alright so one of the things I want to uh, show is how to set up uh, an IK rig that doesn't actually use uh, pull targets. So we've got uh, two stretch bones. Um, let me turn on um, the shapes here for a minute. So we've got these pull targets with these stretch bones that are just helping us tell us uh, which uh, leg these pull targets uh, belong to, and that's a nice feature. But uh, I actually like to uh, work without a pull target at all if I can, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, I'm going to take all these bones here. The stretch bones and the um, IK tar or the pull target bones themselves, and I'm going to delete them. Let's go to object. Let's go to options here and make sure X axis mirror is on, so I only have to work on one side of the of the rig. Do X and delete bones. All right. Now, after I did that, I've actually broken um, these IK constraints, so I want to select uh, the bone with the IK constraint on it, and you can see that it. IK is red and that means that it's broken and the reason for that is is the the pull target bone is no longer no longer exists so we've only got half of these uh, things filled out we can just fix that by clicking out and because we are not going to use pull targets for this at after this point so we need to 
rinse and repeat on all four legs. Just click these and I can see that our chain length is three uh, for all of these. Uh, so that'd be this one, this one, and this one. Uh, that's going to work for us. So <clears throat> let's go to side view here and back to edit mode. Um, I think one of the things that we need to do is just uh, just reposition some of these uh, bones. I'm going to start with this back leg here and if this uh, backbone or the back leg bone, the top one, was actually uh, centered uh, more into the center of this mass of this hind leg, I think that would really um, help the deformation and let's just drop this uh, position of the knee here and actually raise this one up just a hair. Um, if you Actually, a, a dog skeleton is, is almost identical to a human skeleton, and, I'll, and the only real difference is, is if you just got down on all fours right now and put your feet on the floor and put your hands on the floor and pointed them straight out, a, a dog skeleton and a human skeleton is almost identical. There's only one difference, really, and that is that a dog um, walks on its, basically, its fingers and its toes. So... Uh, this bone right here is actually a representation of the foot bones and this one is a representation of the palm bones and a dog's palm and its uh, foot never actually um, contacts the ground like it would in a human but these other bones are actually this would be uh, our thigh and then our shin and then this would be our foot and then our toes uh, and so on so in our front legs it's the same um, principle um, let me just take this front one here and drag this down more to the center of this mass here for this leg so if we were on our hands and knees our elbows would actually face towards um, our, our knees on our back legs would face towards our stomach and also our elbows would face backwards like this towards our stomach so that is really the only difference between a dog and a human as far as is they don't um, make contact with the ground with their foot and their palm bones so so just by making that quick switch right there and we th I think uh, we're gonna get a little bit better or more realistic deformation uh, right off the bat now we'll probably have to do a little bit of uh, clean up here on this model um, let me select this edge whip here this would actually be more uh, straight actually so a little bit more like that and there's usually a little bit more of a poof at the back here with this hind leg. Um, I wonder if I can actually make another... No. Uh, you might have to go in here and uh, actually give a little bit more um, detail around this uh, edge whip and do some more edge whips around this um, front leg here because um, the elbow is going to kind of go over here and then tuck in and we need kind of an armpit um, but this is a low uh, poly model so you may be able to get away without that but basically this is whoops go back into our, my rig here uh, this is where our elbow would face uh, like i said just if we were get to, on our hands and knees um, our skeleton structure really isn't that different except for the fact that dogs walk on their toes and not their palm or feet so that is really uh, can help uh, get a more realistic bend to our legs also I want to change um, this I'm gonna do it I think by selecting my Y values going this direction so I want the tail of that bone to be lined up with the or the head of this bone right here to be lined up with the tail end uh, so I'm gonna just gonna use that uh, the positions in edit mode here so the Y the Y of the tail position I'm just going to control C to copy it and then control V to paste it and then I just want to type G and enter and that will pop the other one into place sometimes uh, you have to do that when you're entering values here you have to actually manually make it do a transform here like with G or R or S and then enter it and then uh, even with X axis mirror on uh, to get it to go to the other side here let me actually look at the roll of this using Control R. I'm going to roll this bone around, and I want that uh, side view here. I want to try to get that X value going this direction. So 
Now this isn't actually anatomically correct, but I found that when I was rigging my dogs and uh, other creatures with a dog type leg, uh, having a uh, a collarbone in here that I could uh, manipulate uh, gave me some uh, very nice um, movement. Um, right now, I think we just need to clean our weights up. There's too much of the chest and too much of the upper shoulder going with that, but uh, just from previous experience, I think that's going to help things out. And since we're talking about the bone rolls here, one of the things I noticed, um, now that our positions uh, in the side view are a little bit uh, better, um, one of the things that's going to make an IK chain work uh, a lot better is if I select all those, uh, except for that collarbone up there, I'm going to go to front orthographic view with one on my numpad and switch my pivot point to median. I'm going to do scale x0 and make sure that this uh, whole bone chain is straight and our dog model is actually allowing us to do that. Now you don't have to have a completely straight bone chain, it's just going to help uh, get a little bit more predictable uh, results when you're using IK. So let me select this top bone here and I want to look at the roll value and it's just got a slight roll so I can actually just type in zero here and you probably barely even seen that move. All right, now I'm going to use this one as the active bone, and I'm going to set, and the reason for that is if I select this bone, the x-axis is coming this way on that one, and it's coming this way on the next one in the chain, but on these lower bones, it's going the opposite way. It's going that way and going that way, and we want them all going uh, the same direction. So let me select all of these bones, and with that last one uh, as the active object, it's the last one we selected. And do control N, active bone, and it fixed uh, some of these. And I ran into this earlier when I was uh, doing some experimenting, and I don't know why that's happening. Um, it should flip them all the right direction here. So let me just select this one and this next one down, which its X direction is going the right way. Control N, active bone. All right, now that flipped it. Let's just do it with this one again. Control in active bone and all right now all of our axes are going the correct way all the X's are going the same direction and all the Z's are pointing uh, backwards or down let's uh, do this uh, back leg now I'm just going to select everything in the back leg control 1 to get in the rear view and scale X 0 and that will straighten that bone out and you can see that the, the bone structure still fits within that uh, back leg rather well. I want to check the roll on this top bone and there is a slight one. I can just zero that out and once again I'm going to select all these bones and with this as the active object control N recalculate our roll to our active bone and for whatever reason the back leg actually worked and it kicked all those X um, axes over to the right direction so that's good. Um, <coughs> so we've got that set now, the other thing we can do, <coughs> oops, I had some, uh, must have had some rig controls that weren't reset here in pose mode. Alright, <coughs> to get a little bit better and more realistic um, leg movement, we can actually, uh, and this was actually one of the things that the forum member was asking, was how can we uh, limit some of these uh, rotations and things like that. This is actually kind of a tough problem here because when we grab this and start straightening it out, we're going to get some um, some bad deformations. And really, we've got two choices. We can either put all of these bones, uh, center them directly in the center of the mesh, and that will prevent that, but it will actually make it look um, unrealistic because it's going to... Uh, give our rotation points in pose mode um, unrealistic uh, points of rotation basically so uh, really the best way to fix this is just as the animator is to never uh, pull your um, target bone too far away from your leg always make sure that you're at a reasonable difference or at a reasonable di distance rather so so basically um, there's not a quick fix for it um, 
it's just something that we have to do as animators is we have to know that we can't extend our legs too far uh, past the normal here. Like I said, we could probably fix this if we set our edit mode position so th this whole bone chain was straight and or at least centered uh, directly in the center of the mesh, but that's just going to give us unrealistic um, uh, rotations to our mesh in pose mode. So uh, kind of a catch-22, I think, uh, just putting uh, that on the animator and saying, hey, don't pull that too far away. Uh, because that's what's going to give you the, the odd rotations. Uh, that's about the only fix we really have for that at this point, or at least w with this uh, simple of a, of a rig. So, and all of that was to say, um, <laughs> basically, uh, segue into uh, some of these uh, constraints, or uh, IK constraint is actually, uh, I always consider it a special constraint in in blender there's special rules that kind of apply to it and one of those rules is um, it doesn't matter where the IK constraint is in the constraint stack it is always going to be evaluated last and not only will it be evaluated last to the bone that it's on it'll be evaluated last for every bone in which it um, effects so an IK constraint with here with a chain length of three is going to affect these three bones if there were multiple constraints on here the IK constraint is always going to get evaluated last and basically uh, long story short the reason I'm uh, mentioning that is uh, we can't put limit rotations on a bone chain with that's affected by an IK because basically when the IK gets evaluated last it's just going to overwrite those uh, those limits so uh, in order to combat that there is a way where we can put limits and work with the IK and that is in a special uh, drop down here if I go to bone properties there is an inverse kinematics uh, panel down here and we can actually lock um, different axes or limit them and uh, in different ways and we can do that all from here Negative. just reset that back to normal uh, for a dog leg, um, basically we only want this to rotate on its x-axis. It doesn't going to have a lot of side movement, so and there definitely won't be a lot of twist, at least without making your dog yelp, and it's pretty much uh, very similar to us. So we can lock uh, the y and z for this first bone. We can walk, lock the y and z for our second bone, and then we can just leave the stop one free. And that is just going to give us some more realistic uh, movement with our leg. All right, so make sure I didn't have my limits or stiffness on here. And that's that's the other thing we could do here is uh, sometimes um, we could actually play around with our the stiffness slider here, and uh, sometimes we can get this to work to get more realistic uh, uh, movement with a multiple uh, bone, especially if you're over two bones. If you've got three bones in your chain. You can you can change the stiffness levels of different uh, bones in there, and uh, sometimes get that to work. I haven't really ever had good luck doing that. It seems kind of like voodoo, whether it works <laughs> or not. So uh, I actually just uh, leave everything zeroed out and don't use, ever use that stiffness value. So so now that I don't have a pull target, you can tell that I don't have any way to control uh, the angle of um, of my bone. Actually, before I get in there, let me just lock all the rest of these here because it's going to have to be done on all. On the first two bones in each chain, we'll just leave X axis open and we'll lock uh, Y and Z. Alright, uh, alright. Oh, back to what I was talking about. I Hopefully, if I can remember here. Oh, yes, we don't have any way to um, change the position of our elbow because I don't have a, a pull target anymore. So, um, IK actually works from the pose position of your bone. So, we can actually, if we wanted to, go in here and start manipulating uh, these inner bones. Um, basically, if we just type R -Y or RXX, we can uh, change our whole leg uh, position just by... Uh, like I said, manipulating uh, these, whoops, R, R, X, X, just by changing these here, so. And more than that, let me just undo all these. And then repose this. Uh, 
So our XX on this one is center bone or uh, for whatever reason it seems to work a lot nicer on the last bone in the front leg and it seems to work a lot better on the middle bone on the rear leg. If I, uh, if I change that. But um, in order to change the whole angle of our leg we can actually select this top bone in RYY. We can change the direction of our uh, of our elbow and I know this doesn't look very good and that's basically because of the weight pain right now so um, but I'm gonna show you a way that almost seems like it, uh, without a pull target it would be a step back if we have to go in here and select multiple bones but basically if we only uh, if we add a new control where we can rotate something in an X direction and have this copy that X direction and then have this bone copy the Y it's local Y um, we can get away with uh, having just uh, a location control and that will also change the foot direction and also uh, basically a, another tweak control that's going to um, change this position and the elbow position is Y so let me just get in here and maybe it'll be a little bit more apparent if I just add one and get on with it so I'm going to select that first bone in the chain and I want to do shift D and then G X and then holding control I'm gonna, gonna pull it out uh, a little bit and that's just basically snapping it in increments here and that'll just if I do G X and then hold control I can snap it back later it's gonna make that easier and this will be our new um, IK tweak and then I want front dot L for front leg and I'm gonna copy that name and paste it over to this right side bone and just change the dot L to dot R. All right. And with this bone selected, um, I'm going to go to pose mode. And because I duplicated that bone, uh, the constraint was actually uh, duplicated as well. So I just want to uh, delete that constraint off of there. And also, what I should have done too before uh, coming in here was um, selecting this bone and then selecting the IK target of the front foot and doing control P keep offset and you can see that with X axis mirror on it happened on the other side alright so now let's set up that constraint I was talking about for this new tweak control uh, basically what I want to do is when I rotate this in the X position I want this bone to rotate in its local X position so I'm going to select this bone then shift select uh, that first bone in the chain uh, control shift C and we're going to do uh, add constraints with targets copy uh, rotation and we want to do local space to local space and only the X so we'll just click all those off and now I can uh, our XX it will rotate that uh, bone for us perfect and now I want to um, have this bone copy this bones Y rotation so uh, having that bone selected first then shift select this top bone uh, shift control C let's copy rotation again local space to local space and only its Y so now this uh, now this bone if I rotate it in the Y direction is going to change our uh, whole position of our in direction of our leg and if I rotate it in the X direction it's gonna allow us to fine-tune um, those center bones and in their positions. So now we're back to um, one more thing that I can do to make this look a little bit better is first let's go to side view here and do GX and then holding control I want to bring that back in in line with uh, the bone that I duplicated it from so it's not sitting out in the middle of nowhere and the next thing I want to do is actually add a custom shape to it so let's go to layer 2 because that's where the other custom shapes uh, were made I'm going to go to top down view here shift A let's add a mesh circle let's make the vertices 16 let's call this circle WGT, WGT for widget and IK tweak and then I want to tab into edit mode here I'm just going to make some quick arrows and you'll want to actually probably spend some time making this a little nicer and make a little nicer shape 
go to front view I want it A to select all the vertices shift D then R Y 90 and now I've got a new uh, tweak shape here and let's apply that to to our rig and so that was the I actual IK bone let me just hide that temporarily I want to grab this one and go to bone properties and we do make sure that wireframe is checked uh, for our shape since there was no faces in there and we can do WGT search IK tweak and let me down scale this down here just a little bit it's just, so it's more appropriately sized and let's unhide that other bone here all right now we can make this a little bit better because you can see that this bone is kind of floating off into space uh, by itself but we can actually make this control shape appear at this bone so we do that by using the at field in our custom shapes so I want to copy the name of this bone control C then I want to paste it at our at field and now we've got a much nicer uh, control that's going to RXX we can adjust the angle of our of our leg from here and you gotta be careful that you don't flip this thing out by going too far so again once again it's it's up to our animator not to uh, flip these things out um, and our YY and we can change our angle alright so that is a pull targetless uh, uh, IK chain and we still have uh, some really good control uh, with this new um, control balloon we've added so I uh, hopefully the placement is going to help you out uh, some of the tips on uh, where the legs actually are and we probably need to do a little topology change here let me actually see if uh, our auto weighting is going to do a little bit better after all of our changes so just select everything make sure everything's cleared out so I'm going to select the mesh and go to our uh, object data and find our vertex groups and with this black button I'm just going to delete all groups and then re with the mesh selected uh, select the, the armature control P automatic weights and let's see if we get a better deformation there that looks a lot more realistic and like I said now we can RXX we can change that any way we wish our back legs were working relatively fine um, like I only did this front leg, but uh, after you repeat that process for all all four, um, by adding that new control bone, uh, you should be set to go. Let me grab this hip here. Oops. Yeah. Get a lot more realistic uh, movement from our French bulldog here. All right. I hope that helps you out a lot, and uh, I hope the tips on using an uh, an IK chain without uh, a pull target is useful to you. Uh, good luck on your project, and like I said, you're going to need to get in here and weight paint uh, to make all this stuff smoother. I did notice there was a few issues up here with the uh, axes uh, through the spine, and some of these um, bone positions could be uh, a little bit better, but uh, I wanted to concentrate mainly on those uh, legs. So if you have any more issues, uh, please let me know, and good luck.